Okay, so we're gonna talk. I think it's gonna be helpful. I hope it's gonna be helpful this this class. Great. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, how to deal with em employment and employees. Mm -hmm. So for me, the, the the most important exercise is you know your employees are gonna be your is is gonna be your team. They're gonna be working for you, and you're gonna be working for them, and they're gonna make it look good. Mm -hmm. So it is important for us to really know what to how to get them. So I always have this chart, and before I'm gonna have, before I hire, before I write a, a job description, I make a clear chart of what I'm not willing to teach. Of course, is within that that within that uh, that job description, that specific job description. Mm -hmm. What I'm not willing to take to teach. What I'm not willing to spend a time to explain something to an employee and and, and on, on the other side of the column is what I am willing to teach what I'm willing to give some time to for this person to teach and to make it clear on the on the side on which I'm not willing to teach is this that's the reason why I'm hiring this employee why why are the reasons why I'm hiring this employee because I want this employee to do something that that even I mean even maybe I, I I don't know how to do or I need that I know that I need to do it but I don't have the time to do it so he needs to come and pick up the pieces. So those are the things that must have and must know and must show in my interview. He must have, he must know, and must show. And pretty much is the qualifications or the abilities that I'm going to put in the job description. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the other side, what I'm willing to teach is are going to be the things that this is what I can fire the employee for. I'm going to teach him to do something that they do not know. And pretty much is what they do within my uh, area of work, within my, my, my company. So I can teach them to move the trash from one place to the other. I can teach them that they need to come in the morning. I can teach them that they need to put this file over there. So it's a little bit of what, how I want them to do the work while, while, while within my within my environment, within my company. And those are going to be the duties and responsibilities. So there I have in my in, in this questionnaire that I make my chart, I try to little by little start creating the job description with qualifications and abilities and the duties and responsibilities. So for example, in my in the things that I'm not willing to teach, I'm not willing to teach, and this is what I am hiring the employee for and must have, must show, uh, is let's say punctuality. So for example, if I'm gonna have an interview, I'm probably gonna ask them to come twice to an interview, maybe three times to an interview. And the first one, they probably will show up and they're gonna be on time, but the second one, they may not be on time. And the third one may not be on time. Probably the first or the second time they were late, oh, I was late because of this or that. And this, the third time they come late, uh, Obviously, they don't have it, mm -hmm. or I need. They need to know how to, and I fill in the blanks. They need to know how to answer the phone. They need to. So, they need to know how to send a fax. They need to know how to maybe change a diaper. Uh, they may need to know how to, um, you know, draw. Uh, they have a. They need to have a credential. They need how uh, how how to drive. Uh, so they need to have a license, uh, a driving's li a driver's license. So those are the things that I need to make the list specifically for that specific job, for that specific job description that I'm working, that I'm looking for. Um, let's say I'm looking for a receptionist, right? I need to know what I'm not willing to teach this person that is bilingual, that knows how to answer the phones, that maybe knows how to type, uh, how to use Excel or how to use Word, that she can send a memo. Uh, thus she has good writing skills. Uh, what else? That she's punctual. That she is kind to people. So those are the things that I'm. I, I'm not going to teach her how to be kind. I mean, she needs to be kind. If I'm going to start hiring someone, and then I need to tell her, you know, no, you don't say this way. You say it that way. I'm going to start having already conflicts with that employee. So uh, I, I and, and it's not necessarily conflicts, but I'm going to start uh, having a, a dynamic of of uh, that is not it's, it's it's not conducive to to to, to do the work. So I better take the time to really hire the person by ask, making sure why I'm not willing to teach them, why I just need them to take care of that. And then, and what I'm willing to teach, of course, they come, uh, 
uh, you know, I need to put the dirty toys on the blue in the blue basket, or I need to greet the customers with "Welcome to Catascalera Children's Center, the Catascalera School. How how can I help you?" You know, those are the things that you're gonna teach her. So she already knows. You already checked that she knows how to answer the phones. You already checked that she is kind and 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 and, and eloquent in answering the phones. So now you need to teach her. You know what? I need you to tell this when you answer the phones. I need you to sit on this table. I need you to come on this. So that's the reason. I mean, those are the things that 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 help that help before you bring a person into your team to really for you to have clarity of what is what you're looking for. And at the same time, you will have a better understanding on the process of, of interview, what is what you're gonna ask. What is why you don't know, confirm when you interview this people, this person? What is what they need to have? And at that moment, it's going to be up to you. Let's say, for example, she is she has all the qualifications, but she doesn't know how to use Word, mm -hmm. and it's something that you need to teach. You need to have it. But you see that they have most of the other skills that they have. They are punctual. Saying they're they're kind. They they do math. They do all these things but they're missing something. At that moment, when you hire that person, then you will know the weaknesses of that person. And it is gonna be up to you to work those things out. But it's better to know what they did not know than not knowing what they did not know. Because when you don't know what they did not know because you didn't do this exercise well, then it's on you, you hire them, and then you have to deal with them. And the problem becomes down the road, and then you're having ah uh, conflicts and co problems with, with 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 that with that relationship. So you have to be very careful to make this list. This list has to be long. I mean, I can show you my list. My list sometimes I have fifty items that I need to make sure that they need to know that I'm not going to spend a time teaching them. I'm not going to spend a time teaching them how to. Uh, so they need to know how to do things. Because if I'm going to start spending time on teaching them something, at what time, I'm going, to, at what time I'm, I'm going to do my job? And at the same time, this is important because then you're hiring people that are going to be better than you in the things that you need help with. Yeah. And if they're better than you in the things that you need help with, guess what happened? They're going to make you look better. They're going to help you grow the company. And they're going to help you. Uh, they, they, they're going to learn how to, how to, how to develop the, 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 their skills based on what they have. And then the little things of, of what you're going to teach them is just, you know, I want you to come at eight o'clock in the morning. I want you to pass, make copies of these documents and put them into files. Or I need you to send me the report by nine o'clock and I need you to send me an Excel spreadsheet this way and that way. Because then the dynamics are becoming much more easier and the dialogue is much more easier. So when you work on this, you have the view and you have the, uh, it's, you have a much better understanding of what you're looking for. And when you do the hiring, it is much easier. And when you work with that person, it is much, it is much long. The relationship is longer and, and you have much, much better opportunity to, to, to navigate the, the, day, the daily work with this person. And then at the same time, you're working on your uh, duties, uh, duties and responsibilities and qualifications of the job description. When you have the job description, all you need to add is and other duties as assigned by management. Because sometimes if you're so very specific, then they say, oh, no, you didn't tell me to do this. But as you add another duty assigned by management, that means that there's other things that you can ask them that they were not necessarily in your job description of the interview. And you can, uh, and, and it's, it's part of that. And and, and this exercise has has helped me uh, a, lot, lot, a lot, I mean, all, all my life. Uh, working with, uh, with with people, and and I know now the weaknesses and the and, and what I'm what are the skills that this person have, and I can understand if if where can I be of support, or maybe not even ask on those things that I already know that they do not know, because then I'm I will setting setting them up and setting myself for 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 frustrations. So it's an exercise that I will do it, and then in the hiring process, of course, once you have this chart. You can have you can ask exercises. You can have uh, uh, you can have uh, in some places they they invite you to stay for for a day. But I mean this is this little this lot of the logistics there. 
but I, I always do exercises. You know, I need you to, they, they need to have good, uh, good writing skills. Okay, you know, I need you to send me a memo. And I put an example, you know, you need to use, they need, they need to know how to use Excel and they need to know how to use uh, Word. So I can have them, you know, please call my sister and tell the, and call this number and I can have the number call and I just listen to the call and they or they leave a recording and I can see how they how they sound. Or I can ask them, you know, write me this memo uh, about, uh, you know, we need to close the school in September because we need to clean the, I don't know, the, the plumbing system, you know, mm -hmm. um, write, write me an, 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 a memo for that or an email for that. And you can see, I can see how they articulate the word and I can, how they can articulate, but I, I can do the exercises because I have the opportunity within that interview to really make an assessment. And, and one thing important is never ask anything personal. I mean, with this controversial uh, society in which we are, it is better not to ask nothing, nothing, nothing personal. What kind mm -hmm. of books do you read? What do you do on the weekend? I mean, if they disclose, it's fine but not for us to ask anything personal to see if they match your personality. Because many times we we start focusing more in, in the gut feeling and if they like what we like, if we don't like what we don't like, instead of looking for the for the job description. Mm -hmm. And I can do, many times I do three interviews. Many times I can do two or three interviews. But do always more than one. And preferably if you can do more than two is better. That way, if the person is interested in the job, they he or she will come for the three inter for the third interview if yeah. she's not interested by the second says ah no i'm not interested and you save your time i mean it's longer it's harder but that's why the marketing of your of your job description of your of, of your job it is it is important you know it is important to 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 to, to, to work on that yeah so what what are the questions that you can do in the hiring process and the interview all everything related to the position everything have you changed diapers? Have you answered the phones? Uh, have you um, sent faxes? Anything related to the position, as many as you want. As and that's that's the way. That's precisely your time to really make an assessment if they have what they have. That's my time for me to know that they have what they have. That they have what I need. That, they, that I need. That I need. That I need them to do. I don't focus in the personality. I don't focus in anything that you know that will be something that obviously is going to come across, but I need to make sure that they know what they need to know for me to, for, that, for that specific position. Nothing personal, we said, but I can ask them, how do, I, how, how do you see yourself in five years? And that's an open question. You know, how do you see yourself in five years? Yesterday, I was, high, I was working with a person who says, hey, you know, I want to do this. She was motivated to do something. And I asked her this questions. How do you see yourself in five years? In five years, she wanted to do something else. So how committed is she to, to, to last five years? She was not committed. Just with this question, tell me that what's the purpose of working with this person if she's not going to be committed in five years? Yeah. And you find a lot of things, a lot of this, a lot of things that it is going to be up to you. I mean, just based this this simple question makes you uh gives you a lot of information on this person, on the on the candidate. Many times it's like, well, yes, I want to go back with my mom that lives in Fresno. I want to leave this, you know. You, you uh, then you you then you make the assessment. Will I keep her? Is it really good? I need her because sometimes you need the employee. Like right now. Okay, I know that this person is going to work with me for six months or for one year, but then I need to find another replacement. So then, but you know, you know those decisions. Another question that is very helpful for me is, what do you do if you don't, if you're not satisfied in three months of the expectations that you were every time we, you have a new hire? There's like a a, a moment of uh, of a fantasy, not a fantasy, but fulfillment. You know, the person was looking for a job, so there's a a sense of 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 of, of um, self confidence again, and a sense of of work and desire to work, and and they have a lot of expectations. And for you, at the same time, is someone that is going to you have expectations for them too, because wow, I need this person to do this. But in those three months, in three months, then you start seeing that the pendulum starts swinging, right? Maybe they don't find the, the the what they were thinking, and maybe it's not really the place that they want to be. And many times, you know, you feel like, oh, maybe I made a mistake on hiring this person. I thought that it was because we make mistakes. You know, maybe we we, we didn't see something, whatever. 
the question is what, what would you do if you're not satisfied so you, you you set up your 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 problem you put your problem in the present to, to avoid it in the future and they say ah oh, sometimes I, I just quit <laughs> or sometimes they they will tell you something and that's how you're going to address it in the three months when when something is false wrong Another question that is important for me is how do you address conflict? How do you address conflict? In human relations, in people with people, we always have a conflict from people that hands, hands you the paper different than you would hand the paper. You know, some people have been in situations which for me, the way I was brought up to hand a page, someone, a person a piece of paper is to, to give it to, to, until they grab it. And now that knowing, I know that I grab it, I let it go. In some of the places, in some of the people, pass me the paper, they toss it at you. You know, so that creates conflict. So how do they address conflict? There's always conflict. They have been, everybody has been in conflict. So how do you address conflict? And they tell you how they address it and you ask to confirm, give me an example. When that happened, how do you do? And you can see if they, if it works with you, maybe you don't, maybe you address conflict by yelling. Maybe you want to address conflict by so I don't know. Every person has different ways to address conflict, but but it helps you because eventually you're going to know how to address conflict in that situation. You can also ask, what are your weaknesses? You know, what are your weaknesses in, in relations to the work and, and why should I fire you? What would be the situation in which I needed to come and tell you, you know, I'm sorry, but you, you're fired. They will tell you, oh, probably because I messed up here, I messed up there. But it's interesting the questions that you will answer that you will see when 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 you, when you answer when you ask these questions, but yeah. they 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 open the path to a lot of information. Uh, another thing that I think is important to you to do when you hire the the uh, 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 an employee is to have an organizational chart. Uh, it it visualizes the uh, the the role of communication. It positions the person on how to communicate, and at the same time, it will be easy for you to see how to communicate with them too, because many times we make a lot of mistakes. Many times we make a lot of mistakes. So let's say, for example, I'm the owner. The owner, the, the owner is one, and 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 he has a chef, and the chef needs to talk to pet to the prep and the dishwasher, right? And here you have given the orders to the chef that the chef needs to tell the tell the prep or the dishwasher the, the things that I need to do. So if you, I'm the owner and I just bypass my chef and I tell my, I'm the owner and I go directly to, to this case to Luis or I go directly to Julio, I'm, I'm breaking the, I, I, I'm creating a conflict within within my chef because I gave my chef the authority to tell these people to do something and he hasn't, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not respecting that, that, that line of authority. So if I want to respect that line of authority, I need to go back and tell, hey, you know, to tell my chef, hey chef, you know, I think you need to tell the, the, the dishwasher that the dishes are not very clean. That way you empower, and the chef is gonna see it, it's gonna appreciate it. Because sometimes if you bypass that line of command, then you then you ended up uh uh you know, then, then you ended up uh, creating some conflicts. Sometimes we create our own conflicts by not respecting those li those lines of communications. But at the same time, if the if if the hostess or the host uh, in this case uh, the host of the restaurant, the hostess or the person is going to tell, she doesn't need to do anything with with the prep or anything with the dishwasher because they're two two different departments completely. So one doesn't need to tell the other what to do. And you will see, you will find many things in many companies that. I mean, it's not your business. At that point, you can say, you know, it's not your business and go back to your thing. So the the, the visualization of who responds and who talks to whom, you know, is important for them to understand how the dynamics work and where is their position and they can understand it. But it's also for us to understand in that and, and, and help out those dynamics. And they can see also who is and who is not within the company, who is and who is not within the company. I have many, many situations in which you know, uh, the wife or the of the uncle or the cousin of the owner comes and tells people what to do, and the cousin is the accountant, but, but then creates conflict. Uh, and 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 it, and 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 it is, I think, to me, it is it is it is important to have an organizational chart because it, it creates a, a flow of dynamics 
within the company and everybody understands and and, and everybody is just like setting the rules. This is how the rules are. And and it, it, ref, it also reminds me that, wow, I need to tell this person something, but I need to talk to maybe maybe when I have the meeting with this person, with, with, with his apartment head, I will let him let them know. Uh, uh, or I can talk to them and it, it, it helps, it helps to create dynamics. Now for us, for the administration, once you have that organizational chart, I would always put another chart that tells me the position, the, the position, if it is a full-time or is a part-time, probably the schedule and to whom they report to if necessary, and then my salary. I need to have a chart. I need to have a chart in a, a, like a cheat sheet that will tell me how much is my salary for the year or how much is my salary for the month or how much I'm paying each person. I need to have that, all of them, all of them in one place that I can see immediately how much it is because it's going to help me in my budget. It's going to help me making quick decisions. It's going to help me in, in how flexibility can I have to increase the salary of one person or how much not, I don't have the, the, the capacity to increase the salary of the person. But I need to have a chart, a chart when I, in which I have all the stuff, all the stuff, how much is it cost me? Maybe a long one, maybe I can summarize it and then the second page I have all, but it is a visual, it, it is a visual help that, wow, I did not know that my salary is going to be $120,000 a year. And it could be, okay, this person is full-time and was 40 hours at $10 an hour. Of course, this is an old slide because right now everything is $60 an hour. I need to update, <laughs> <laughs> I need to update my slide. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, $16 an hour is going to be, wow, this is how much it's going to be because uh, $10 an hour is, you know, depend, depending. So it, it helps me see uh, the number uh, in one in one page, in one, in one, in one base, page. And it's, it's very helpful. Another thing that obviously you need to have it is your employee handbook, which your employee handbook is your um, uh, it, it is it is a guide it is a guide that that by by which everybody plays and some I, I've been in places which is just like a, a thick thick legal document with little letters and you can be you can get in trouble because well, the more you put you get in trouble the less you put you get in trouble so you're going to get in trouble anyway so at least try to cover the basics you know try to cover the basics as your employee handbook of course you're going to put the position or the job description of the person that you, you're hiring of course you're going to say oh welcome to this company blah 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 you put a little bit of verb about your policies about your goals about your your desires and the companies and the history, if you want, if not, you know, at least welcome to this. And you put your mission and your vision and and this is what we look for. But then I mean this is that that's for more for 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 development. But uh for the position you need to put the description, job description. You were hired to do this and they need to see what they were hired for. Discipline. How how you put the general the general it could be as general or you can be as a specific right the general is you know general information about discipline uh, obviously you have verbal written and termination just like the three strikes right you have the verbal the written and you know person the recurring information but at the same time you can also skip serious conditions serious conditions in which may not follow the disciplinary action and you can just jump ahead and say you know. Uh, this is automatically changed. Now with the political environment, you know, in the past, I remember that I could not bring a firearm into my into my work, yeah. right? So if someone brings a firearm, you know, uh, you can you can fire them at that, at that any time and my thing. Or violence, as long as they start fist fighting, it is a fist fight with an employee or with a with a client or a vendor or whatever. Insubordination. Or they come uh, drugged or, or with alcohol breath, you know, some some serious conditions or ch child abuse, child molesting, or anything, anything that could be risky. You, those serious conditions they just bypass the process, and you you think of those four scenarios, and it's better to list them. Some of them, I mean, sometimes we forget, sometimes we don't know, but we try to put those terminations in which they don't follow the regular process of oh, I'm going to call your attention, I'm going to give you a verbal warning, and then I'm going to give you a written warning, and then if that doesn't improve, then you, you're terminated. You know, I, you need to put that. 
Um, and when you write the verbal, you know, the verbal be a specific, hey, you know, I tell you this, but when you write the written notification or written disciplinary, it helps the employee and it helps you to make reference to the verbal, putting the date, the time, and what was the activity that it was recommended. And in your written response, in your written communications, you need to put also what are your expectations and what are the conditions if those expectations are not met. That's the first verbal right, written, written, written disciplinary note. A written disciplinary note, you, you make reference to the verbal, you know, on May 7, I told you that you didn't have, you need to answer the, you need to answer, good morning, how are you, how can I help you, and you haven't done it, if you want that, yeah? and it was on May 7 that you did it, and it was in the morning when you were talking to this person, so my expectation is that you change your behavior, you make sure that make sure you answer this by this date, and the conditions is that if you don't do this, if you don't improve in this, it may be cause for your termination, uh, for more disciplinary action or termination. You know, you always put that, and we're going to talk a little bit about this a little bit longer. What else in your in your in your in your employee handbook? Conflict resolution, zero tolerance. You can say, you know, we don't we don't tolerate anything. You don't tolerate this. So this is also the serious condition that it will terminate. You know, with zero tolerance. Uh, but at the same time, the conflict resolution is where and how and to whom do they go if they don't find an agreement? You know, probably the conflict resolution is going to be you're going to talk to your supervisor. If the supervisor does not respond or you feel that it's not responsible, then you talk to the HR. If the HR does not respond, then you talk to the boss. And if you talk to the boss, then you talk, you can go to the state, then you can go to the city, or you can go to the, uh, you know, you, you need to tell them where and how to go when they find resolution to their problems. You need to put how uh, how do you pay, uh, and how do you pay, and what frequency, uh, when when and how do you pay with frequency with on the frequency, you pay weekly, you pay bi weekly, you pay on the fifteenth, you pay on the last, you pay by check, you pay with the check deposit. You need to let them know how how how, how they receive their 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 income. Uh, you need to disclose information about workers' comp in case that they have some accidents. You have to put anything that is employment relations entities like the EDD, the labor for labor board, any place where they can report that they are protected. And, and many times it is posted in the on, on those on those posters that they ask you to put by. Okay. Obviously, you need to put some information about Cal OSHA or about or, 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 uh, safe health uh, um, uh, operations safety. Uh, in case they trip, in case uh, you know they sometimes if they work in the kitchen, you need to ask them to bring shoes. If they're using uh, blades, they need to make sure they use gloves. You know, they need helmets. You know all this prevention, accident prevention. And as a matter of fact, I think next year the state of California is now enforcing this preventive measures to the to to, to workers to 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 employ to employers. So. Uh, I mean, if you already have what, your Kalosha handbook or your uh, or your requirements for Kalosha, you can do it. Uh, so those are the things that I would include in my in my handbook. Uh, in the in the termination process, sometimes when we have to say goodbye to an employee, when we realize that the relationship doesn't work, and we give them all those, when you give them the verbal, the written, mm -hmm. and the and the final termination, you know, even the employee finds that you know it's. They understand that they, you gave them already three warnings. Yeah, I already gave three warnings. I'm sorry, can I cannot give you more? They 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 don't take it bad. I mean, it's easier, but it still is very difficult sometimes the termination. But in the termination, the legality is you need to pay the salaries right there, right then, all of them. Don't even have to wait to come tomorrow, nothing. The same day you have to pay them. And if you may make a mistake, make a mistake falling uh, and, and the error uh, favoring the, the employee. You know, so you have to pay them quick because this is a separation, this is a severance. You need to make sure that the, the, the separation is short and quick. Many times they, oh, but I have my mother is in the hospital and it has cancer and my brother is, is just blind. I need to take care of them. And all. They, they, they start telling you all these dramatic things. You just have to say, you know, I'm sorry that we're, we're, it's over. Thank you. Pick up your stuff. Uh, Thank you. And you can you have to score them. Make make it short, make it quick, and be fair. It's an interesting technicality. I mean, this is unfortunately we have to we have many times we have to let people go 
uh, or if it's not let people go, simply we, we cannot work with them. So, uh, or they cannot work with those. They're 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 no they're they're uh, vicious to the, the development of the of the environment. So we have to do that. So when you terminate, you just make sure you pay them all. The uh, payroll. Payroll is important because you collect funds for retirement through the IRS, and you tell uh, they tell you that for in the W four, and you collect funds for unemployment uh, through the EDD and the state. They tell you that in the W four. Uh, so those are your taxes. The problem with uh, another problem with payroll, but the responsibility with payroll is that you collect taxes. You withhold taxes for the employee and for your for your employer. So that's the that's that's important thing on on payroll. And you have some regulations. You have uh, before they hire, you need to check the I nine. And you're not an official federal agent that knows the I nine, but the I nine there's some guidance that you need to ask for. So you just follow those guidelines. And on the termination, we said you know termination, you pay the salaries right away. At the year end, you need to give the W two. At the year end, before the the first year, you need to make W two. Those are some obligations that we have. Another uh, element related to payroll and that is important is the difference between an employee and independent contractor who uh, in the state of California, it is very, it's very stringent and very critical that we don't call someone independent contractor when the independent contractor is not an independent contractor and, uh, and it should be an employee. And the rule is basically three rules, right? They set their own schedule. So if you're telling the person to come at a specific time, uh, maybe consider an employee. Uh, if the independent contractor, I mean, try to work with a plumber. When they come, I'm still waiting for someone to come and trim the trees from uh, my house. Okay. You know, they come when they can and when they want. So that's the thing. When there's an independent contractor, they come when they come and when they can and when they want. You kind of call it an independent contractor when you want them to come at a specific time. And they set on their own criteria to resolve the problem. You don't tell the plumber, hey, you know, I need you to do this and that and that. And that. No, you tell them, I fix it and they fix it. Well, I don't need to tell my you know, the trim tree, say, you need to cut this and that and that, that branch that is on the left. And, uh, no, they come and they suit their own criteria. So you have to, there's a room, a room of independent criteria when they make the, those decisions. And and the, the third one is they also have to do similar works and independent and, and, and similar but independent jobs. Let's say, for example, a plumber is a plumber. Why? Because he fixes toilets and he, he fixes showers. So they're similar because within the plumbing, but they're independent one from the other because the shower and the plumber and, and, the, and, and, and the plumbing is and the toilet is, 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 is different, right? It's, it's, something, it's something different. Or they can do uh, uh, residential and they do commercial, you know, those kind of things. They're similar but different at the same time. Uh, but if you have an employee and she does uh, bookkeeping, in the, uh, she only does bookkeeping, and bookkeeping is for everything that she does is bookkeeping, while she doesn't have similar jobs, and they're not independent from each other. They all have the same line of the of of of, of work, uh, and you're telling them they need to come on this schedule and you tell them how to do. They may not necessarily become, they may not be necessarily independent contractors and be considered as employee and employees. So it's something that 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 it is important for us to 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 understand, especially when people come and work, especially when you want to give them the ten ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Uh, our tax, the tax withholding, some people, I mean, some people want to do their payroll their own, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, it's according to the tables and they are, they file tax, I mean, you have to file taxes every three months uh, when, when you have employees. Uh, but you can do that, I mean, you can, you can do that internally. To people. I know companies, I mean, especially, uh, I know people that they want to do their, their own payroll, they can do it internally, it's fine. I mean, they go into the, they go into the tables and they, they write the five checks of their employees and they, they love to do that, that's fine. But if not, you know, you can go with someone external that it could be a bookkeeper that offer you for services or you can be a vendor and make sure, I mean, it all depends on your ability and your desires and probably you already have some people in this case. But I, I make sure that uh, they can do the entire process. They can do the entire process of calculating the payroll, calculating the taxes, 
They do the direct deposit for the employee. They do the reports for the EDD or for the IRS every three months. You don't really pay attention to anything. All you need to make sure is there's money in the bank. And that's the best thing and that they have the, the, the they have the timesheets. I mean, uh, to me, that's the best thing because I, 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 I there's so much more to do in the business than really uh, lose my, spend my time in working payroll. I'd rather pay to a company like ADP or Paycheck or the bank to do the payroll for me. They can do even make the direct deposit of the employee. I don't even know how, I don't even have to give the, the check to the employee. They, uh, or, or write another check for the employee. Sometimes when you like, when you work with your accountant or your bookkeeper, they give you the checks and they say, okay, you know, this is the check that you need to write for and you give copies to this. It's additional work. I'd rather just pay everything. But this is something that some people, what they want. So that's about a little bit about payroll. Uh, some of the legalities, obviously, we know the basics. Uh, Full-time is 40 hours. Part-time, I would say up to 36 because many times if you say, oh, part-time is 39 or 38, Many times people, we, we get delayed. We get delayed because we need to clean my, like clean the desk or sometimes because the customer called and the conversation take, took a little longer. If you have a very narrow distance between the 30, the 38 and the 40, those two hours can easily jump very easily. But if you give yourself four hours difference or maybe five hours difference, you know, those five hours within a week, you know, it's... Uh, you, you still fall within the part time. You don't pass over the forty hours a week. Obviously, the overtime and the double time needs to be paid. The I nine, we know how. I mean, if I, I'm sure you, you you know about those W two, the same thing. Dependent contract versus employee. Time cards. The time cards need to be signed. It's better to have the time cards always signed, uh, because. I've been in situations in which, in, in case of law, I mean, in situations in the case of law that, well, I give you, I, I wrote you all the checks and every every week I, I pay you, you give you your paycheck. Yes, yes, but you know, uh, that Saturday or that Friday when I have to stay over time, you didn't pay it. I says, how come? I guess I, I did pay it. No, you didn't. And then the court's going to say, okay, the judge is going to say, okay, show me the timesheet. Well, you know, I don't have it. Oh, so that means you didn't pay. And then you're going to have penalties for not paying. So make sure you have all the time cards signed, all the time cards signed, and 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 that's that's just the, the basic uh, safety net for 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 for, for payer. All the time cards signed. Um, another rule is no exchange of hours in the schedule. No exchange for hours in the schedule. Oh, I come on Saturday. Uh, I stay two hours late on Friday. Uh, but don't worry if because I say two hours late on, on Friday, I can come two hours late on Monday. So that way we're eat, we're square. Uh-uh, no. No exchange of hours in the schedule. Just be straight. I mean, what was work was work and you pay for it. If it was over time, incur the expense. Whatever it was, it was incur the expense and do it. Never ever do the exchange of hours. That's not good. Uh, workers' comp classification. Um, this is just an exercise with workers' comp. Sometimes we have uh, uh, the, uh, uh, an employee that has two different positions. Uh, it, it answers the phone in the morning, but in the afternoon goes and, I don't know, trim the trees. Uh, if we don't have a separation, cl that classification, obviously the, 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 the workers' comp is going to classify that employee with the highest, with the higher risk. Uh, so make sure that you understand the classification of your workers' comp so you don't pay. I mean, workers' comp is an expense and you may pay more if you're not well, very plus, or you're not classifying the risk of the, of, of all the, of all your employees. So review that with, uh, with your agent or with, with your company. Uh, in insurance, you can also buy employee practice liability. That's another option that you can do. Uh, breaks, you got to make sure you give the breaks to the person for hours uh, within the first four hours and then within the second four hours. Uh, and what else? Uh, determination, we talk about strikes, verbal, written. Uh, it is a role as the, uh, the, there are many things that, that when you pay the company, when you pay for an employee, there are many things that are not necessarily tied to money and people appreciate that and they stay with you longer, even though the pay is less. 
And many times it's the environment of creativity. If they feel that they partly can participate in problem solutions, uh, it, is, it is a role to create us this environment of creativity, this environment of motivation, this environment of teamwork. This, that is the role of the employer to do that. The employees are not going to bring that. You know, they're going to share it with what we have. But people, many times people, when they feel that they participate in the problem solution, that's more valuable than getting paid $20 an hour. They can be paid $20 an hour. So they, don't give, they don't give room to their creativity and they don't, re they don't feel part of the teamwork. People are frustrated and that's where people resign. People, when they people resign is they fire the employer. Pretty much you were fired. <laughs> fire because they not they don't feeling that that everyone everyone all all the all, every person that I know is they they want to be part of to be part of a team they want to share their creativity I mean maybe not be the right creativity but if you do the right hiring you're gonna give you the right creativity right so mm -hmm. make sure that that you you create that another thing that to be aware of is uh, the use of computers and personal time you know in the past it was like yes computers but now with social media uh. And even social media, I've been in situations in which, you know, it is, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm going to say something, you know, that maybe, maybe is, 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 is irrelevant. But uh, it occurs to me that maybe because we're dealing with children, you know, my, my assistant uh, takes a picture of the children and make a post in social media. She yeah. doesn't have the authority, or she or he doesn't have the authority to put pictures of any of the children in 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 in, their, in, their, in the personal Facebook. Yeah. Right. So so those are the things that you have to make sure that you're, you're listed and you're you can monitor, you can list it, you can paint the policies, but make use make sure that it is something. It's a new problem, right? And social media is a new problem. So in one side we have everything that is 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 uh, you know valuable uh, is, is 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 unperceived it is not accountable, but then on the other side we have something that it is accountable it is within the uh, within the rule of, of law you know we have the benefits we can offer different benefits uh, we can offer the four hundred one k the stocks vacation I think now the state is asking us to give I mean a certain certain hours for personal time sick time. The flexibility; those are other things that also people feel comfortable when they work in an environment where they have flexibility. Now, the problem with flexibility many times is make sure you don't set precedents that is going to get back to you and they're going to bite you because people like to compare. People like to say, "Why, why me, and why not? Why them and not me? Why? How come that person has it and I don't have it? That's natural. So make sure you don't have any, 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 any precedent. But you know, be flexible. Be flexible. It's always appreciated. So uh, when we talk about HR, you know, it's called human resources. But when we we'll work with human, when we work with people, everyone has different personal needs. Everyone. We have forty employees. Each one of them is going to have personal needs. Uh, the husband is dying. The son is lost. Uh, they are. They just get married. They want to do a trip. The mother is having a baby. What? Whatever. Everyone has different personalities. I want to buy a new car. I want to buy an electric car. I don't want to buy an electric car. We have this mortgage. We have this interest rate. We have this account. Uh, we don't have enough money. Everyone comes with personal needs, and not only that, everyone has different personalities different personalities, different way to see life, different way to, 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 to behave. We have different ways in which we behave. But at the same time, on the other hand, we have rules, regulations, and laws. And all this come together in your work area. So that's why in the work area, you have to delimit very well what is <coughs> what are the rules that you're going to do in, 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 in your work environment. You know, this is my work area. I'm the boss. I'm the manager. I'm the owner of this business. In this, within this limits, these are the rules. This, are, this is my employee handbook. This is the people that are going to be working with. And you have to respect the personalities. You have to respect the rules, regulations, and law. You have to respect the personalities. But in the work area, anything, your personal needs to stay outside, your personality traits stayed outside. 
you know, you just bring here to work, we're gonna work here on this place. Because everybody has personal needs, but you don't need to bring them here into my office. Everybody has personalities, but you don't need to bring them here into my office. Everybody has something, story, a drama in their life. You don't need to bring them here. We, we're here to work. And we can work in a work environment that is amicable, friendly, creative, but everything else is stay outside. And why I say that, because, you know, if the 24 hours, if the 24 hours of the day, there's that's, that's, that's three times eight, right? Speak, so eight hours you sleep, eight hours you work, and eight hours you're, you take your personal time. That if while you're sleeping, you're not living, right? Right, you're living, but biologically living, but you're not living, you know, awake. Uh, so it leaves us with only uh, the work time and the personal time. Probably you can say half of your life, half of the life, half of the life of every person that works at other places are is spent with us. So that's why we need to make this environment very, very special, very, very special in which they come here to work. And I understand that there's some personal needs, but I understand also there's some personalities, but I, as a manager, I'm responsible of that, that of those dynamics within this working area. And I can make, it can be a misery, misery or it could be a, a very fruitful environment with captivity and work. So I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time. I mean, I can I can go endless with personal needs, but I'm going to spend a little time in personalities because I think to me this is very creative and very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, and and there there are many theories, right? So everything started with you know four points in the in the compass, but we can make it a little more complicated and we can add a little more uh, in the middle, right? There's northeast and we can add northeast, but then you can even make it more complicated and we can add something between the northeast and the northeast by the, you know, we can. We can make it more complicated. Well, the same thing with personalities. The history of personalities is probably the same thing. Uh, I know that uh, around 400 before Christ, there was uh, Hippocrates came up with four different personalities, the phlegmatic, the choleric, the sanguine, and the melancholic. Mm -hmm. But then in the 1400s, someone came up with the Enneagram, you know, that they make now instead of four, they made nine. That's why they call Enneagram, nine different personalities. But then in the 1900s, Youngs and Brichtas, you know, they bring something, something more. But to me, the basics are still the same. To me, the basics are still the same. To make it simple, I think, therefore, um, characters or personalities. That following the the Hippocrates, you know, the melancholic is the one who is is conceptual. He likes to listen, inspire, gives confidence. Is collaborative, is flexible. The phlegmatic or the systematic is the person that is analytical, is rational, is goal oriented, <clears throat> is organized, does not take risk. And you can see them sometimes when you go and talk to them. You know, the choleric is direct, is candid, is competitive, is independent, impatient, takes control. The sun, the sun, the sanguino inspires, inspires social multitask, tell stories, is persuasive, and many times you see it seems they may lose focus. But I'm sure you have seen this kind of personalities, mm -hmm. and and I know that if I know that you know, and if I put them in the right place, and if I know their skills, it can help me move, 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 move my, my my team much better. You know, uh, you can you can have. You see the person that it is analytical. They their desk is just very straight, it's clean, the pens are lined up, and you know, we call them obsessive compulsive, but they this person is very analytical. And in their conversation or even in the dialogue that you have, they want to analyze everything. And they not may not make a decision, but they want to make sure all the points are, are given. The social, the person that is social, you can even, this person that you ask, hey, can you please put the trash out? And immediately after you give that direction, it, it turns around, if there's a group of people, turns around the group of people and says, hey, do you want to come with me? <laughs> Invite someone else to come with them because they feel more comfortable when they're social. And I'm sure you know the the, the direct is the person that is impatient. And I'll tell me real quick, and, and, and they don't have the patience. They just slam the the, 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 the the computer, they turn it off and they move. They're just, uh, it's like a volcano of, of activity because they're direct and they want a competitive. They, 
So we all have we all have a little bit of this. You know, I have. I, I mean, if it is a, a quadrant, you know, we all have the we all have all this components, and nothing is nothing is wrong, nothing is bad. It's just the way we are. And of course, you know, we start with the first quadrant of four personalities, but now, as I said, you know, it gets complicated, and now we have this style of ESF, ESFJ, or ENFJ, all these different concepts, but pretty much is the same, are the same four type of personalities that I'm that, that I that I uh, always always I mean may, may not be corner of the person, uh, but 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 it helps me understand uh, where I am. And when I understand it, I step back and I say, okay, this is, I cannot take it personal. It's just a difference, uh, difference of personalities. So there's some tests that you make a, 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 a study and a person can come up with this. I mean, we all have a little bit of everything. We all have a little bit of everything and it may be different depending on circumstances, right? With my kids, I may be direct or maybe I'm more social, but at work, I may be more conceptual or more analytic. Or on a, on a certain circumstances, I can care less and I may be more social, but in other circumstances, within, even within my job, I can be more analytic. But all depends on the circumstances, but a little bit of the personality shows up. Shows up. You know, probably this person is more direct than the other one, or more social than the other one, or probably this, this person is probably less conceptual than the other person, uh, or maybe this one is more analytic than the other. So everyone falls in different categories. And it's not that we are, one is good and the other one is bad. It's just the way we are. It's just the way we are. We're just simply, simply different. But when you put them in, in dialogue, in a working environment, uh, you put a conceptual working with a direct or a social working with a direct or direct work with an analytical, you get a lot of dynamics and a lot of responses and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, situations in which sometimes it evolves in, 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 into conflict. So you need to make sure where you point the people to do the things that you have. So, for example, if I if I put someone that is direct, that wants the things to be done quickly, that wants the things to be done right, I mean right away, doesn't have any patience because it's a direct personality. He just wants things fast. And I put him to work with a social person. What is this person is going to think about the social that he is irresponsible? Because the social wants to have fun. And yes, let's talk about it before and let's talk with someone else. They want to do the things together. And what is the social gonna say about the direct? Ah, oh, it is very impatient. Ah, oh, he's impatient. He's impatient. And then the, 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 there's conflict. Then you have the conflict if they don't, if they don't, if, if if you don't understand, if they don't understand that. Or what happened if you put someone that is direct with a conceptual, the one that's direct. And the one that, I mean, I, I use the example. We can put a four person, four people in the in 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 uh, in, 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 in a in a day in a in a, a day trip, right? In a, day, in a field trip, and say, let's go to the beach. The direct, I don't even say the beach. He's already in the car with the uh, with the um, with the swimming suit and everything is just ready. The conceptual is making. Oh yes, yes, let's go to the beach and maybe we can. We can snorkel and maybe we can have a fire pit and maybe uh, he starts losing himself in into into the planning of the things that may happen may not happen. So when the direct may think that you put them together in the same room, the direct wants the answers like right now. Tell me, don't tell me the story. Don't tell me the novella. Don't tell me how you came to where it happened, because the conceptual will tell you the story from where it began and how it was evolving to become where it was to where the problem happened. So there is gonna say, well, this guy doesn't know how to, how to articulate. He doesn't know how to speak or whatever. Or you put the conceptual with the direct, the same thing. It's gonna think he's impatient. Yeah, he wants everything just like right now. And, and there's, there's a conflict. And the same thing, you know, the conceptual with the analytic. The analytic, they wants everything clear, perfect. There's the one that, you come with a with a bouquet of flowers, 
and you say, oh, here's a dozen of flowers. And before, instead of saying, oh, how beautiful they are, nice red. No, he starts counting the flowers, right? Because it's the analytical. And they say, oh, no, it's not a dozen. They're only, they're only 10, right? So then, then it becomes like, this is a petulant. Or the analytic with the conceptual. The conceptual, the analytic is, no, it's, it's, it's not understand me. He doesn't understand me. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. He just forget. He doesn't get it. And so on with the analytic and the social. The analytic and the social, he likes to have talks and he will consider distracted. Or the sort you put a social with the analytic and says, oh, this guy is boring. So uh, to me, uh, to me, this is uh, a little bit of the of the things that uh, are important to the to the uh, to, 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 to the elements of, of HR. Sometimes, when you want to hire someone, uh, I, even with families, even with family, um, they uh, I want to hire my my brother or my son or get to run the daycare. Uh, you have those conflicts. You have those conflicts because the son has some different personal needs, has a different personality, and you, this is your business. You want them to do something, and, and they don't do it. So it's always something that it is it is unique. But I'm sure you have seen this in your. <laughs> I, I don't know how many employees <laughs> you have, but uh, right now we have twelve, and then fourteen with Harvest and I. Yeah, a lot of personalities. <laughs> Yes, but we, we need to understand. So uh, that that's my that's my my talk. And I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording so we can discuss a couple of things here. Uh, not part of the recording, not part of the class.